There's something about places of ruin and abandon that you just can't tear your eyes away from. Whether they were left thousands of years ago or very recently, these places are surrounded by questions that you want answers to. And the bigger the place, the bigger the questions. So with that, let's take a look at some of the world's largest abandoned cities, towns, and places. Plymouth, Montserrat. It's not often that a capital city is also a total ghost town, but that's exactly what Plymouth is to the island on Montserrat. Despite only being 102 kilometers squared, this Caribbean island was once home to over 13,000 people. Then the earth-shattering events of July 1995 changed everything. A previously dormant Sofrier Hills volcano in the southern part of the island became active. Huge eruptions and heaps of ash descended on the city and surrounding settlements, forcing all residents to evacuate. The continuing eruptions over the next two years meant that over 8,000 people were eventually forced to leave. In 1997, a series of devastating eruptions triggered catastrophic pyroclastic flows in Lahars which burned the town and buried its remains under 4.6 feet of ash. Here you can see the collapsed roof of the Plymouth Library as well as thousands of homes once belonging to inhabitants seemingly swallowed up by the ground. From that point, the southern half of the island was placed under an exclusion zone because of the continuing volcanic activity. The destruction of Plymouth caused huge economic problems for the island, and by the end of 1997, fewer than 1,200 people remain there, and the exclusion zone is still in place. To this day, Plymouth is known as the Pompeii of the Caribbean. So a note to any thrill-seeking tourists looking to visit, make sure your insurance is comprehensive. Now before we take a trip to the many other spine-tingling abandoned places around the globe, why don't you let your cursor take a visit to that like and subscribe button. I put out new videos every day covering everything from abandoned theme parks you didn't know about to secret places censored by Google. So stick around to the end and I'll hook you up with even more videos that'll send shivers down your spine. Fortlandia, Brazil. There's a well-known saying that states, don't let your ego get the better of you. So when I tell you about famous industrialist Henry Ford's utopia that he arrogantly called Fordlandia, I think you know where this is going. In 1928, Ford had had enough of paying for rubber. He decided to get around this by setting up a new venture in the Amazon jungle in a bid to produce all his own rubber. What this involved was building a city from the ground up, but he figured he could build it however he wanted. So in the middle of the Amazon, he built a weirdly Western-themed workshop city that housed all of his 2,000 would-be workers and their families. But the project was ravaged by ineptitude. His American managers wouldn't take advice from the locals, resulting in chaotic crop loss. The Western ethics Ford put into place saw no alcohol permitted and a strict diet of oatmeal, canned peaches, and brown rice, which led to catastrophic riots. Ford abandoned the project in 1934, but still had the rights to the land, so nothing could be changed or maintained properly. Workers moved out and the place fell into a state of ruin. To this day, you can still see the empty jungle city of the famous Fordlandia, with a handful of locals inhabiting the shells of the derelict buildings 90 years on. But it's unlikely this rubber town will ever truly bounce back. Gunkanjima there's almost nowhere in the world with a history as strange or as terrifying as Gunkanjima, also known as Battleship Island. Built by Mitsubishi back in the early 1900s, it was constructed directly above a rich submarine coal deposit. By 1941, the island was producing 400,000 tons of coal per year. Accommodations were built to house all workers and their families, turning the tiny one square kilometer rock into a sprawling hub of life. High-rise complexes, schools, restaurants, and courtyards were all constructed, and by the 1950s, it was home to nearly 6,000 residents. Then the coal ran out. Mitsubishi closed the mine and everyone left, taking only the essentials with them and leaving behind the lives they once knew. The crumbling city floating in the ocean was left as a reminder of the effects of Japan's rapid industrialization. That's not the whole story. A darker chapter of the island's history revealed that during the Second World War, Korean citizens and Chinese prisoners of war were used as forced labor in the mines. In the backbreaking working conditions along with malnutrition and exhaustion, it's estimated over a thousand prisoners died between 1930 and the end of the war. If this place seems haunted to you, that's because it probably is. Wittenoom, Australia. At its peak, Wittenoom, Western Australia was home to almost 20,000 residents. 
It was the largest town in northwestern Australia and a stunning example of how a mining community could be built on the back of a thriving industry. Unfortunately, that industry was asbestos. Blue asbestos to be specific, which was used in everything at the time from cigarette filters to brake pads. For those of you living under a rock for the last 50 years, fibers of asbestos are known to cause lung disease and cancer, leading to respiratory failure and death. Sadly, the residents of Wittenoom were no exception. As the findings of the toxicity of asbestos were published, the Wittenoom mine's profitability fell and in 1966 it was permanently closed. But the damage was already done. The giant allotments you see in the footage show blocks of land where hundreds of homes used to be, all of which were demolished as they contained asbestos. Even though residents fled the now permanently unsafe area, over 2,000 of them are believed to have died from asbestos-related diseases. Until 2019, some stubborn residents were still determined to live there despite not receiving water or power from the government, as the once thriving town was officially degazetted. Unfortunately for them, you can't hide from Google Maps. Marosha, Cyprus. It's hard to comprehend that a once bustling tourist spot visited by the likes of Marilyn Monroe, Richard Burton, and Elizabeth Taylor could ever go out of style. Well, this one did, but not by anyone's choice. Varosha, Cyprus in the 1970s was one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. Boasting beautiful seaside resorts and world-class accommodations, it had a population of around 39,000 people, along with 45 hotels, 60 apartment hotels, 99 places of entertainment, and 21 banks. But in 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus. It followed the Cypriot coup of 1974, leading Cypriot and Turkish armies to descend on the beach with civilians trapped in the middle. All of them fled for their lives. The area has since been fenced off and used as a buffer zone between the island's remaining communities, and for 46 years, no one except military and UN personnel have been allowed in. Even taking pictures within what they call a first-degree military zone is considered a breach of military law. That's what makes this drone footage all the more impressive. The secret ingredient is crime. Yuzhapu, China. Another example of a Chinese ghost city was designed as the East answer to New York, Yuzhapu. This central business district was built based on the cityscape of Manhattan, but located in the middle of Tianjin. Unlike its successful older brother Ordos, Yuzhapu is in big trouble. Chinese local government officials are now drowning in debt from funding the city's build, with official accounts tallying the second Manhattan's creation at four and a half trillion and counting. Unofficial estimates predict it could be as high as 10 trillion in total. Borrowing heavily to create the next new megacity has always been China's way. By selling vast amounts of land to developers, borrowing to subsidize construction costs, the resulting jobs in these new cities will rise and pay back the debt. But China isn't growing as fast as it used to due to a severe economic slowdown, so places like this are now less than one-fifth full, posing a real threat to the country's bank balance. Yuzhapu's new shopping malls are desolate, the residential districts are ghost-like, and many of the six-lane roads don't have crosswalks because they're simply not needed. Sorry, China, but this imitation is pretty far from flattery. Krakow, Italy. There are two types of stubborn, regular stubborn and Italian stubborn. Don't believe me? Well, it's been proven by the history of the village of Krakow. This is an Italian hilltop town that has endured more strife than Jesus. For God's sake, they even filmed part of Passion of the Christ here. Krakow was established way back in the 8th century, and throughout the medieval period, they fended off wave after wave of attacks from oncoming armies of political missteps. You can see that even now, these buildings have maintained most of their original structure. The position of the town on the hilltop made it a perfect high ground to defend from oncoming attacks. Even a bout of the plague in 1656 couldn't force the villagers out. It was all going so well until 1963 when Mother Nature decided to have a go and hit the hilltop with a series of landslides and earthquakes, which eventually forced the 1,800 residents to evacuate. To land a final blow, Mother Nature tried to level her opponent with an earthquake that left the ancient site abandoned and unsafe for return. Even so, the hilltop village still definitely stands to this day. Can anyone else see the outline of a middle finger to the rest of the world here? Burj Al Babas. Every man's home is his castle, but in some cases, those castles never really become homes. What you're looking at isn't the scene of a dystopian novel, but the $200 million ghost town of Burj Al Babas. 
built halfway between Istanbul and Ankara. This empty town contains the allotments of 732 identical Disney-esque chateaus. Originally designed as a neighborhood for the rich, workers completed 587 of these $500,000 buildings when their company went bankrupt in 2018. The weakening of the Turkish currency following plenty of political trouble has made it difficult for big businesses to repay foreign debts, which put a halt to a lot of projects up and down the country. None quite as eerie as this, though. In the two years since construction has stopped, you can see that this Disneyland's disrepair is already beginning to sink its teeth in. Since Turkey's relaxed revision of financial criteria for foreigners was introduced in 2018, there's still hope that the project might be resurrected. Until then, this ghost town is waiting for its fairy tale ending. Deception Island, Antarctica. Along with having a name that sounds like it's from a James Bond film, Deception Island's dilapidated buildings and abandoned equipment look like part of a movie set. This tiny island in Antarctica was once the base of a Norwegian Chilean whaling station, which was abandoned in 1931 following a slump in whale oil prices. Those large rusted cylinders you see there are actually giant boiling tanks, and they were once used by whalers to extract the oil from whale carcasses. They still stand on the beaches to this day, along with derelict wooden buildings with gutted interiors, old rotting boats, and even a small cemetery. It was reoccupied in the 1940s by the British and used as a meteorological station, with other stations set up by Chile close by. In the 60s, this expanded to include an aircraft hangar for flight operations, the remains of which can still be seen. But the matter of who really owned the island caused many arguments between the UK, Chile, and Argentina before the island took matters into its own hands. Like the name suggests, there was a secret that Deception Island was sitting on. It turned out to be the site of an active volcano. Two huge eruptions in 1967 and 1969 destroyed most of the buildings, forcing everyone to evacuate. Learning from their mistake of building on top of an active volcano, the bay hasn't been inhabited since. But the island does have plenty of chin-strap penguins to keep its shores occupied. Times Beach, Missouri. The small town of Times Beach, Missouri used to be home to more than 2,200 residents. But now when you look on updated maps, there's almost no trace that anyone ever lived there. What happened to all the buildings and infrastructure of this riverside ghost town? Well, it turns out that in the early 1970s, the town hired a contractor to spray their roads with waste oil. This was to help keep the dust levels down, but while you and I know that this sounds like a really terrible idea, it was about to get much worse. What the residents didn't know was that the contractor had mixed the oil with an industrial waste byproduct called dioxin, which he didn't know was highly toxic. By spraying this all around the town for over four years, it eventually caused the deaths of many animals as well as poisoning some of the locals. In 1982, soil tests conducted by the Environmental Protection Agency revealed the area's toxicity was well above what was considered safe. But then some terribly timed cosmic karma hit. Just a day after the samples were collected, the local river burst its banks. Dioxin-contaminated water flooded the entire town and residents were advised not to return to their homes, with many told to leave and take absolutely nothing with them. The forced eviction cost $36.7 million to buy out, but the town was so polluted that the abandoned houses were torn down and incinerated. The cleanup effort alone is thought to have cost around $200 million, and now in its place is the Route 66 State Park, a place thousands of people once called home. Ashgabat, Turkmenistan. While the capital city of Turkmenistan may not technically be a ghost town, it certainly feels like one. Ashgabat's huge buildings and massive roads are built to accommodate its population of just under 1 million people, but it's so eerily vacant you almost wouldn't think anyone lives here. The city is undeniably beautiful, and along with its ostentatious designs, it also has the highest number of marble buildings in the world. 543 to be exact. And that's not its only boast. The city is home to the world's largest indoor Ferris wheel, as well as the largest architectural star. But despite all these weirdly benign titles, there are very few people around to enjoy the sights. Many tourists have commented in blogs and documentaries that these streets are incredibly empty. The beautiful parks are always quiet, the huge roads are barren, 
and even the glittering monuments have very few visitors. It might have something to do with the country's OCD-inspired laws, which explicitly state the government will get rid of everything that makes our capital untidy, slovenly, and tasteless. This means it's forbidden to smoke in public places, drive a dirty car, or any car that's not white for that matter. With strict rules like this, along with its culture of isolation and secrecy, it's not surprising that it's become a ghost town. But a very pretty looking ghost town nonetheless. Kitsault, Canada. At first glance, the neat rows of houses on the tree-lined streets of this town in British Columbia make it look like a gorgeous place to live. It has shopping centers, a library, bars, and even a theater. But while the lights are on, nobody's home. In a shocking twist of events, this town known as Kitsault was abandoned just 18 months after it was built and no one has lived here since 1982. It was quickly erected in 1979 after a significant deposit of molybdenum was discovered in the area. 1,200 miners and their families were brought in to dig up the rare element, and the Phelps Dodge Corporation that employed them built the $250 million community to house them. But less than two years down the line, molybdenum prices tanked and money in the area ran dry. Devastated, residents began a mass exodus over a six-month period. But there was a remote chance that molybdenum prices could spring back, so one lonely caretaker was left there. His job was to keep the heat running in the houses and fix any damage to ensure the buildings weren't reclaimed by nature. The town was then bought for just $5.7 million in 2005 by millionaire Krishnan Shruthan Theron, who has plans to restore the town to its former glory. But it's been over 15 years, and while the houses look pristine, they remain empty. So do I, emotionally. Nagoro, Japan While it may not be one of the largest abandoned places in the world, the village of Nagoro in Japan is certainly one of the creepiest. With its population having shrunk from over 300 residents in the 1950s to just 27 in 2019, it's rare to see anyone walking along the deserted streets. But what can be seen are bizarre life-size dolls dotted around the decaying landscape. These were made by resident Tsukimi Ayano in a strange attempt to try and fill the void in the village of those who left or passed on. With few opportunities for young people, limited resources, and being a fairly inconvenient place to live nowadays, the village has become devoid of children and young families. Instead, places like the schools are filled with a few dozen dolls waiting for class to begin. Old meeting spaces like this one are now crammed with the stuffed citizens. Some perch on bikes and sit by the side of the empty roads, and others even take part in thinly attended festivals. Although I'm not quite sure what this one is supposed to be doing. Any thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Pyramiden, Norway Anyone visiting the small Arctic town of Pyramiden, Norway would easily think that this place was simply abandoned overnight but its remains are unlike any others in the world. Located on Svalbard, freezing conditions have kept this ghostly mining town well-preserved since the 1990s, with some estimates believing it could take as long as 500 years to decay. But at its peak, it was home to over a thousand residents, many of whom worked in the local mines. It was bought by the Soviets in 1927, and as proof of ownership, they installed a giant bust of Lenin to look out over the town center. These people were literally living under a communist gaze. But in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, Pyramiden's situation turned sour. Low salaries, resource shortages, and poor living standards didn't make it much of a place to call home. And in 1998, the mine was closed. Almost overnight, at least 300 workers set down their tools and left with their families, followed over the coming months by many others. The place was left totally abandoned. With many in a hurry to leave, you can still see objects like old film reels and personal effects that they left behind. Kayakoi, Turkey When you look at this image of the abandoned city of Kayakoi in Turkey, how long would you guess it's been abandoned for? With those roofless stone houses and worn narrow streets, it looks like some kind of long-lost ancient ruin. But would you believe that it's only been abandoned for about a hundred years? That's right, in the 1920s, this area was a bustling hub of life, home to approximately 20,000 residents of the Orthodox Greek community. However, a hideous war ruined it all, as war does with most things. The Greco-Turkish War saw Greece and Turkey at one another's throat. 
Even though the Greek residents of Kayakoi had gotten along peacefully with their Turkish neighbors, the government demanded a compulsory population exchange in 1923. This meant the Greek community were forced to move back to Greece, so they abandoned their beautiful village and were banned from returning. With no one occupying them, approximately 350 of these homes have sat empty for almost a century, along with two derelict churches and decrepit water fountains. Harsh winters and strong winds have stripped the buildings down to their stony brickwork, making them look ancient. But that somehow made this place all the more intriguing, because there are almost no photos of what this place looked like before the war. What do you think it looked like? Let me know in the comments. Kadikin, Russia. Looking at the state of the old Russian mining town of Kadikin, you're probably not surprised to learn that it's abandoned. But what may shock you is that it's only been unpopulated for about 10 years. It was initially built in the 1930s after a large deposit of coal was discovered in the area, but it was under the rule of the Soviet Union and they used prison labor to lay the foundations of the town. Despite its heinous beginnings, Kadakin slowly began to attract the community and the business from two mines supported over 10,000 residents. But when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, the mines became unprofitable. After the first mine closed in 1992, people began leaving, and an explosion in the second mine in 1996 drove away many more. Of the 10,000 residents it had, only 300 were left by 2007, and in 2010, the area was officially considered depopulated. Most residents were apparently eager to leave quickly, with posters still hung on walls, books laid across tables, and many other belongings left behind on their way out. Like Pyramidon, there's even a decaying bust of linen in the town center. So it seems fitting that it'll crumble along with the memory of the old Soviet regime. Kolmanskop, Namibia. The derelict structures of Kolmanskop in the Nambian Desert may look like any other abandoned outpost, but can you believe this ghost town was once a luxurious desert haven? That's because in 1908, diamonds were discovered in this part of the desert. Word of the precious stones spread fast, and by 1912, many prospectors had set up shop in this tiny town. It's insane to think that these dilapidated buildings used to be the homes of over 1,000 diamond miners, prospectors, and their families. And even more so when you learn, they produced about a million carats of diamonds a year. That was 12% of the world's total diamond production at the time. But by the 1930s, intensive mining efforts had dug up just about all the precious stones the area had to offer. People began leaving the town in droves, abandoning their houses as well as possessions like this bathtub that were too cumbersome to trek back through the desert. Without human activity to keep the sand at bay, the dunes began rolling through the abandoned town, bursting through doors and windows to fill up the empty rooms with tons of sand. And while some buildings have nearly been swallowed up, others have been stripped bare by the winds to the point that even their foundations are exposed. Talk about being stripped of your wealth. Pripyat, Ukraine. Founded as the nuclear city back in 1970, Pripyat in the Ukraine has one of the most haunting past of any abandoned metropolis on earth. It was built with almost 13,000 apartments and schools for 5,000 children for families and workers of the nearby nuclear power plant, a little place you might have heard of called Chernobyl. That's right, when the reactor of this plant blew in 1986, it released a huge amount of toxic radiation into the atmosphere. Pripyat, being less than two miles away from the disaster epicenter, was evacuated the very next day. The extent of the fallout was so bad that for over 30 years, the city has remained abandoned. Staunch reminders of the impact the disaster had can be found in Pripyat's lost amusement park with its decrepit Ferris wheel and slowly riding bumper cars that haven't been ridden in decades. Because evacuees were given just 50 minutes to leave, many apartments and old classrooms still hold their decayed belongings. They've become a surreal reminder of the 50,000 people who lost everything they had that day. And while visits to the area have been allowed to this part of the nuclear exclusion zone in recent years, it could be anywhere from 20 to 300 years before it becomes habitable again. North Brother Island, New York. While many of these abandoned places seem far away, for some Americans, there's one that might be closer to home than you realize. On New York's East River lies a small island covered in derelict red brick buildings with a haunted past. This is North Brother Island, home of the abandoned Riverside Hospital, 
It's made up exclusively of old hospital buildings from morgues and nurses' houses to a specialized typhoid infirmary. Its location in the middle of the river made it a perfect place to isolate highly contagious patients, something we could have used recently if you catch my drift. In the 1950s, it became a treatment center for adolescent drug addicts, of which many were said to have been held against their will until they became clean. You can even read the cries for help they carved into the walls, like it wasn't creepy enough already. Being a controversial practice, it was shut down in 1963 and has been left to decay ever since. After nearly 60 years of abandonment, this eerie island is in a state of near collapse. Many of the roads and pathways have been consumed by vegetation and the crumbling buildings have been reclaimed by nature. But reminders of the hospital's infectious past remain, like the many abandoned rooms and wards containing rotting furniture. There's even a creepy old library in what used to be a boy's dormitory filled with hundreds of books that were left behind. You couldn't pay me to set foot in this place, but what about you? How much money would it take for you to spend a night trapped on this island in the old abandoned hospital? Let me know in the comments down below. Copil Down, Britain From above, the beautiful little village of Copil Down in Britain looks like an idyllic dream. The neat gardens and driveways make it look like any other English hamlet, but on closer inspection, it really isn't what it seems. The architecture is oddly European, and the entire residential area resembles more of a bomb site than a populated area. That's because these eerily empty buildings have never been occupied. Copil Down is actually a fake village which was built by the Ministry of Defense at the end of the Cold War. It was used by the British Army to practice their urban warfare and close combat fighting skills in an Eastern European setting. But once the war ended, the site was still used for drills and combat exercises. In more recent years, the facility has been expanded to include a small shanty town built up of cargo containers. These have been laid out to emulate the streets of Afghanistan and Iraq where the British Army were once deployed. They even added in burned out cars and carriages of an old train to help them prepare for almost any situation. They definitely ruined the sleepy English town aesthetic though. Hatsuan, China Far from being a collection of crumbling bricks and rotten interiors, Hatsuan Village on China's Shangshan Island is almost the opposite of what you'd expect an abandoned city to look like. Located just 40 miles from Shanghai, these buildings and old houses have been completely taken over by the local wildlife, turning the village into a green gem on the island shoreline. In the 1990s, this was a thriving fishing village, but the tiny bay became increasingly unable to meet the massive demands of China's growing fishing industry. This was a devastating blow for the 2,000 fishermen and their families who inhabited more than 500 homes in the village, and many began to migrate towards the mainland in search of jobs. Over the years, the village slowly emptied, and by 1994, only a handful of villagers remained. That's when Mother Nature began plastering every wall, nook, and cranny of the settlement with a lush blanket of fast-growing, climbing plants. It almost looks like the walls of the buildings are made completely out of greenery. Now that's what you call a greenhouse. Ordos Kengbashi, China Welcome to the ghost town accidentally designed to be a ghost town. This is Ordos New Town, located in the remote province of Inner Mongolia, China. It sat on one-sixth of China's coal reserves and boasts enough accommodations to house 300,000 residents. But initially, that was it. Having built towering high-rises in an impressive downtown area in just five years, there were no communal facilities. This lack of urban infrastructure and basic services gave this colossal city a hard time attracting new residents. As such, it stood almost empty for many years. It sounds crazy, but this is a typical example of how Chinese megacities are built. They're not created with the current population in mind, but more around the build it and they will come theory. Buildings and monuments are built big to make its residents feel small, a classic Soviet architectural move common in emerging Chinese towns. The sprawling nature means that even though the city currently has around 100,000 residents, it still feels emptier than the inside of Logan Paul's head. Which of these do you secretly most want to visit? Let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.